Hey Virgo, how are you? I am so glad that you are here. This is all astrology. We're going to talk about your July 2020 video because we're going to come out with another video for you for the second part of July. Doing the rising sign videos is actually my favorite thing. We're going to talk about five things for Virgo. We're going to discuss the eclipse that happens at the beginning of July. We're going to also talk about Mars. We're going to talk about the North Node. We're going to talk about values such as Venus. We're going to talk about cancer energy, but we're going to talk about big picture, big picture of where we're headed and how we're changing our values and the ways that we think. So Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Rising, this is so, so, so connected to you because Virgo is ruled by Mercury. What is this going to mean for you? What's going to change in your life? What are you letting go of? Are you changing your job? Are you changing friends? Are you letting go of people that were family members? <laughs> First look at the eclipse, 1338 in Capricorn. Find Capricorn in your chart. You don't have a chart, comment your digits below. I can get that to you. It's for free. Once we have a rising sign, we then can see where the energy is in our grid. And for you, Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Risings, your Capricorn energy is your fifth house. Fifth house stuff, children, fun, joy, creativity, organized activities, having a good time organizing activities. This could be sports related. This could be taking betting and gambling, you know, and all that fun stuff. Having a good time with your body, definitely being physically active. Climb, rock climbing, this would be a good one. They're always wanting to physically ascend. And that's what that fifth house stuff is, the physical ascension of the body, right? And there's lots of ways to do that. Somebody could say, well, I ran two miles today. I'm going to run, run, you know, five miles tomorrow. But Capricorn energy loves to climb. There is just this keep on going higher and higher thing. But we're letting something go because that's what this eclipse means. I have another video already out about the eclipse. I want you to go and watch it. It's, a, it's actually pinned right below this video. As soon as this video is over, go and watch that video because it gives you the bigger meaning. It gives you the, the macro also. And that's important because this one is going to, we're going to find out specifically what the heck this means in your life, in your chart, and the cycle involved. This is a release. Capricorn, an eclipse. It's a lunar eclipse. So what happens is that the, the moon, right? The moon at 1338, the sun at the opposite side and your cancer energy at 1338. What this highlights is work and family, work and family. It's work in the fifth house. So you want work to be fun. There's something about your work. You want it to be fun, right? And, you, and it can be, right? Getting involved with children, having a good time with them, maybe teaching sports, you know, some sort of an organized physical activity with children would be perfect for Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Risings. But at the same time, there's a release of that. Maybe you've already done that and you're done with it. Or maybe you're changing. Maybe you're going from like hockey to football or whatever, basketball to t-ball. I don't know. Maybe you're changing something there. Maybe there's something that you've grown out of. Here's the deal. There has been a lot of friction. And if you already haven't let something go, all right, if there's already this organization when it comes to children and this action that you haven't let go of, chances are this eclipse will do it for you if you already haven't let it go. Because what the eclipse does is it is this big light. It's this moonlight, right? It's like a flashlight and it shines it on something. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, I've been wanting to do this. I've, I've, I've known that this was getting like it was becoming way more like work and less like fun for me. And I got involved because I wanted it to be fun. You know, like I volunteer my time and maybe it's not fun anymore. And so, you know, this is just examples. And so we get to the point where we realize when the light shines, we realize, oh, like that's the last straw type of thing. It doesn't have to be a big knockdown drag out battle, but there's a realization. And this has been something you've been trying to in a, in a strange way because you, you don't like to back down. This is, this is what makes this tricky. Capricorn doesn't want to give up. Capricorn is like, no, I got to keep working at this. It'll work. It'll work. If we just do this, it'll work. That's Capricorn. But the full moon is like, no. And it's not just the full moon, by the way. It's a south node lunar eclipse. It's the south node energy. Okay. And a south node, you can't fight the nodes. So if there's something ending, let it end. Let it go. Walk away from it. You're going to see something better come along, something that's better for you that's going to come along, something that's going to involve your soul's growth. You've probably done everything you can do at this level, 
really, whether you realized it or not, you can't grow anymore at that level. So there's this way we're going to just, we're going to go ahead and see something else. We're going to do something else. And so it could be a change in work. Here's the thing. This obviously, because it's an eclipse that it's in Capricorn, so the opposite side of it is home. And so your home, your cancer energy is in your 11th house. Now your 11th house being involved in group activities, this is a big deal because that is where your cancer energy is, right? You like being in a group because it feels like family. So you're going to like to be in crowds, right? It, it just, you know, the, the bigger meaning of the cancer sign, we always talk about it in a really in the micro way, which is my inner emotions and my feelings. When you take cancer energy and you expand it and you talk about a global expression of it, it represents humanity. It represents the public on a big way, on a big scale. And so it's like, but these are all my family. I feel good around them. Okay. So there's this divine feminine energy at 13 degrees in cancer. And this divine feminine energy at 13 degrees cancer in your 11th house it's a nice new beginning and understanding. If it's in your 11th house, this is internet, right? This is family with the internet, family within social media. This is, I can, I can make a connection here and I can make deep connections in those, in those areas very easily. So there might be this juggling that you're going to be doing. And that's good. Juggling is good because number three is the Gemini energy and the North Node in Gemini, okay? So for you, Gemini energy, this is your 10th house. And this is job. This is ambitions. This is career. This is how you show up in the world. This is literally where you express your best. And if Gemini is there, this Gemini is among siblings, among my neighbors, among people in my community. But nowadays, because we have evolved, the Gemini energy also represents social media. You see the theme happening here? Social media, internet, right? The community within the community, this whole thing of let's all band together and rise together. This is a big emphasis on that. This is about not just me, but we. Gemini energy is sales. It's teaching. It's relating. It is still sibling energy as well, right? So there could be some, some awesome stuff that goes on when you connect with people. They can feel like siblings. And these could be people from past lives. All of this is very real. Uh, or you could say, no, they remind me of someone from another time. Or they remind me of someone from my childhood. However you want to look at it, whatever works for you. These are just words. These are just terms. There's a vibratory energy that exists. So that vibratory energy knows no words. It doesn't need words. It's called a universal language. And when you learn what that universal language is, you understand that words really create division. And so we go beyond words. We understand more feelings and empathy and nurturing. And this is that cancer energy. This is that 11th house stuff. And I love that you have cancer in the 11th house because you have the ability to understand this in a really intimate way. This is your tribe. This is your community. Understanding the world beyond the world. There's this other unity, this other community, the CCC, you know, citizens of the cosmic community. Are you going to be a part of it? Virgo ascendant, Virgo rising. You can do it. You can be it. You may already be it. If this goes way beyond for you, then that's okay. But just understand it's time for us all, not just you, not just me, but all of us. It's time for us to get beyond the physical, the material. It's time for us to get to beyond, get beyond form. Form limits us. When we see form, we make an idea right away in our brain. We put someone into a bucket and we say, oh, they're this, right? They're in this category. We like cookie cutter things because it keeps things organized and we feel safe, right? And so now what we're doing, what we're evolving into is we're evolving into the space where we no longer need to have categories, where we no longer need to have name tags. We no longer need to put someone in, you know, tightly into a gender or a race or a skin color thing, you know, or ethnicity, like you're this, you're that. It's beyond that. And if we can graduate, we can evolve and we can then lift the earth up and we can evolve together and we become members. Together we become members. And that is the bigger, bigger, bigger picture of this, of this cancer energy in the 11th house. Now, Mars. Mars in your Aryan energy. Virgo rising is in your 8th house. 
So when you have that there, the eighth house is deep energies. It's emotions, deep hidden emotions. It's emotions that you are aware of that you know about and you don't want nobody else to know about. Okay, because they're very private for you. You feel very vulnerable. Having Mars there, Mars can stir the emotional waters. Mars is fiery. You have Aryan energy there. All right, so you do have fire there already. But Mars comes through and Mars initiates. Mars wants to start something. Mars can be impulsive. Okay, now if, you, if you're a medium, you know, if you're someone who, who talks to those who, who are in the other realms, you're going to see a heightened activity of this. This is what Mars will do there. All right, but realizing that Mars being there in cardinal energy also sets up some discomfort in the area of I just talked about your 11th house. It creates test and stress. There's tension. And it also does this to the fifth house that I talked about when I talked about the Capricorn energy and work and, um, you know, working with children and, you know, just it's going to add stress and testing. So if the full moon and that eclipse in your Capricorn energy, didn't do something for you. And if you didn't make a decision, if you said, oh, I'm going to hang out, I'm just going to figure this out. I can work this out. You, you know, you're being asked to let something go. And if you refuse to let it go, Mars squaring that energy is going to get to, a, it's going to create, things are just going to get even more heated eventually. And you don't, let's just decide that because we know Mars is impulsive. Mars wants to fight. So recognizing you're going to have this, this, I'm ready to fight thing. You, you know, there's a thing about Mars. It's the ego. It's the ego. So realizing it's the ego is going to be big. It's going to be really important. And if you and if, if things aren't squashed before this, because Mars stays here for six months, for the next six months, Mars is in your eighth house. And your eighth house is people you're deeply bonded with. And yes, you could be deeply bonded with people who, like I said, who are out there. But starting new relationships, right? And it's squaring this would explain why you don't want to start something new, right? The Aryan energy. But Mars is like, but we need to start something new. Be flexible. When you stay flexible, the, the your Gemini energy, your 10th house, I'm going back to it. When you stay flexible, which means I can go left, I can go right. I like variety. Hone in on that variety. Hone in on the word experiment. I'm just trying this and I'm going to see how it works out for the next six months. Everything is an experiment. Consider it an experiment. Consider yourself like the mad scientist and you're like, okay, I'm in my laboratory and I just want to see. I'm not saying this is a definite. I'm just testing the waters. I just want to see. I'm at the buffet. I want to take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I want to take a little bit of everything so I can see what I like the most. And then after I've done that, I have to see how it agrees with me, right? It's just not that simple of, oh, it tastes good. Therefore, it is good. It's not that simple, Mars. It's not that simple, Aries in the eighth house, because that's what they do. They are very impulsive and they're short-sighted in their thinking. They don't think things through and they don't consider others. They don't know how to be balanced and fair. Okay, so realize that and that will get you very far. But remember the goal. The goal is to let the soul control that Mars energy. Remember, Mars is the ego. Let the soul control.